Well, thank you. Um, it's a fantastic event here. You've heard about health this morning, you've heard about education, and in a sense I want you to feel passionate for a moment about environmental health. Um, you're looking a bit in the fog there at uh, some of the most fantastic ecosystems. This is a prototype we have on Earth. This is where our biodiversity is. This is where this year you have a drought. In Amazonia there is a drought. There is a 100-year drought on the Rio Negro. It means that ships on many of the rivers can't go up and down normally as they used to. This is the home to people, not just uh, indigenous people, it's the home to people who came over the past centuries, Caboclos in Brazil and many other names in the Philippines or in Indonesia or Malaysia or Africa. Um, people who've learned to live with the forest, forest dwelling people. And I certainly want you to look at this picture not as an accumulation of sequestered carbon. Please don't. This is such a primitive notion. But nevertheless, it is true, as we worry about CO2 emissions and our climate, almost 20% of annual emissions on Earth still come from destroying what's on this picture. This has been going on for the last four to five decades four to five decades in which the capital was there and in which large machines, which can do so much damage so fast, were available to humans. Now, the topic here is um, that we really want to think about markets. Um, that I want you to think about markets as one of the not yet fully used opportunities to save the rainforest, not to destroy it. Imagine you live in this forest. You are forest dwelling people. You are two to three days up some small river. Somebody has to take you or you take yourself by boat. These are very distant, isolated locations, very small communities with the exception of spotted large cities in some places in Amazonia, for instance, is the size of all of Europe. Um, so even if you have something to sell, how do you sell it? One year, when you have collected some seeds or some perishable fruit, the trader comes by at the right time. The other year, the trader doesn't come at the right time, so you produce rots or the trader can't sell it to the industry because the industry still has enough in stock. It's a very imperfect market of many, many things. The uh, challenge here is both when we come to economic models in a moment, but also if we look at what is there to be sold, that it's such a vast variety of things. You probably all buy once in a while Brazil nuts. They come nicely shelled uh, when you go to a shop here. Brazil nut trees only survive in the midst of the forest. They're not a plantation product. A good example, but it's very tough to collect it. You have to wear a hard hat. It comes in hard nuts. And uh, they are hard to crack uh, if you don't have an industrial process. There's a large range, if you go to an Amazonian market or to a Southeast Asian market, of fruit and seed varieties that all have um, good uses. In Europe, the more famous ones now, and in the United States, are acai. Um, you drink it uh, in smoothies, or you have the guarana, kind of lemonade drink. Um, Probably in your lipstick, if you are a lady, you have some genipapo and so on. You have decorative plants like bromelias. I just use very few examples. Um, and you have lots of so-called essential oils, 
that go into uh, cosmetic creams, shampoos, all kinds of products. Uh, some of them high value, for instance, if you take a, a, a tree called Pau Horse, pink wood, uh, its bark has a perfume that goes into some of the most expensive things you can buy just here in Berlin down the street. Fibers and wood, medicinal plants, honey, uh, you can plant in the forest without destroying it, uh, shade coffee, shade cocoa, and of course you can also very selectively harvest wood, uh, trees have a lifespan, and you can uh, sell a selectively certified wood. You also have the beginnings of a market in terms of go to Nuremberg, go to the Biofach, and there is a huge growing market for bioproducts, for rainforest products. So people have woken up, you see professional packaging, um, you have large cosmetic firms, particularly in Brazil, who, who have the overwhelming share of the market and they do use rainforest products. But yet, what is happening is too small to make the difference we need. You are not uh, creating yet an economy in the rainforest that would be competitive with the quick money people make by clearing forests, um, planting soybeans, um, putting cattle, planting more recently uh, biofuels, oil palm. Uh, there are lots of threats to the maintenance of the forest on an economic basis because the economics are not worked efficiently enough. That's my argument. Just to make this a little colorful, here are some of the seeds. Here are some of your Brazil nuts. This is FSC certified wood. This is the shade coffee you can grow in the forest. These are some local fruit, some bromelias. There's a huge beautiful variety of things, uh, and indigenous people, local people, um, bring their knowledge to this. This is age-old knowledge, it's not yet uh, generalized industrial knowledge. So what needs to happen to make this market work better? And let me take one step back. What has already happened? Because uh, at least in a number of uh, major rainforest holding countries, legislation has been improved. Um, nature has been put into reserves. Uh, there's more policing going on. There's more education going on. So really when we talk about rainforest market making now, we are not saying this is the one thing which will solve it all, but rather it is a little bit the icing on the cake which we need to make the real difference. The real difference in my definition and many people's definition is will the rainforest remain standing? We want to see standing forest that doesn't uh, lose biodiversity and that doesn't destroy our climate either. So I'll walk you through five uh, options and again it's just like the fruits of the rainforest this is complex because if you take any single solution it's going to be good it's going to make a difference but it's not good enough you need the sum of these things and you will see that most of it should be done by private sector actors in countries where general policies for forest protection uh, are in place. And probably a lot of this should be considered now when people meet at the end of this month in Cancun for the next climate summit. Because one of the areas which looks at least a little bit hopeful is that the um, mechanism to reduce uh, deforestation, destruction of forests, the so-called red, red plus mechanism, will come into force. And rather than just going, and this is what I want to get across to you and what I would love you to get across to others, rather than just going for a nice little project here and a nice little project there, I would hope that some of this money also goes into systemic 
reforms. Let's look at five of them. The first one is, imagine you had a green commodity exchange for rainforest products in Brazil, in Indonesia. These things are probably region or country specific to begin with. Um, you do have such exchanges for wheat and corn in Chicago and all over the world since a long time, but you don't have a place that can say, I will wish to buy so many tons of acai at such and such time at such and such price. Or I will buy so much priprioca, which is a perfume essence, but people have to plant it in the forest at such and such price at such and such time. And this is why people will be reluctant to plant it or to collect it. It's also reason not having a commodity exchange why industries, I work a lot in Sao Paulo, so in Sao Paulo, some of the medium-sized cosmetics industries say, look, I would like to work more with Amazonian products, but it's so unreliable. I never know when I get what. And so the introduction of a green commodity exchange, it's not a very expensive thing. It can be structured. It needs a little bit of start-up money would make a world of a difference in getting this market accessible both to the producers or collectors um, as well as to the buyers. So that's the first thing we need. The second one is small business development. Remember that picture of the Brazil nut? It's a hard shell outside and hard shells, each nut has another very hard shell, try to crack it with a hammer and you are busy all day. So you need small scale industrialization for shelling, for packing things into vacuum plastic, it comes down to very practical things when you live in a far off rainforest village and you have a product. Some things need cool storage so you need some solar energy and a and a freezer, um, but you need small business development at the community level, because who sells the forest and moves on? The local people, not the middleman, not the um, cosmetics producer uh, in a large city elsewhere in the country. So local community-based uh, economic development. There have been many development projects, many good training programs, people have tried, people have succeeded in some places. We are not talking about something new, we are talking about scale. Uh, I was so impressed with the uh, education presentation here earlier on, the, the video. Wow, you could go to scale in terms of teaching people skills and giving them access through internet to the markets in a completely different fashion. Third of the five points is the business community would need to be educated. You have to imagine, if we talk to uh, people not even just in Europe, but even in South America, but people who are not intimately familiar with the rainforest and its products, for them to really imagine what new products they might develop and put on the market, they would have to understand the options in much more detail. We almost need a sort of postgraduate school for business to develop this range of items in a professional way. Uh, people in Brazil are thinking about having an annual meeting where there would be seminars for international business and investors and bankers interested in this. Because unless you create the knowledge, the business community will say, this is very valuable, this is very ethical, this is very beautiful, but excuse me, I don't understand it. You must overcome that threshold. The fourth one is specialized rainforest investment funds. 
if you have funds which are set up to invest only in these kinds of products, then that's what they will do. And that's what they will learn to do professionally so that there is a profit. Not the huge 25% profit, but there can be a reasonable return of 3%, 5% for people who want to keep their money, make some money, but also do something that makes sense in their hearts and on earth. And lastly, if all of the others would work, you would see uh, additions to the already existing list of companies uh, who are out there working in the rainforest, having small labs, having a, a professional line of products based, the shampoo based on Anjiroba, um, you would have longer lists of these and then you would need not the big stock market because the big stock market is for big companies and big companies are not suited to this rainforest scenario. You would probably need the equivalent of a stock market or investment exchange uh, so that people who are not intimately familiar but willing to invest with professional guidance and criteria would come uh, to do so. So I very much hope that as you look at Cancun, and people will say, oh, this is, uh, you know, Copenhagen was so depressing and, um, you know, tone down your expectations. Please do have expectations and, and keep pushing the red financing, keep pushing private sector financing and not for giveaways, not just for payment of environmental services. Let us pay for something that can become self-sustaining. Let us advocate rainforest marketing. So here are the five items just for you to remember. The commodity exchange, small business development, educate the business community, rainforest investment funds, and a stock exchange. And maybe if we get all of these, it'll be another important step to stop deforestation. Thank you very much. <laughs>